We found out that we were expecting Taylor in September of um, 2001. Um, you know, everything with our pregnancy was completely normal. Chris and Joanna at the time were living in Missouri, just outside St. Louis. And um, it was kind of tough only because you wanted to see them. You wanted to see how Joanna was doing. You wanted to be with them. You know, such a special time in their lives, their first child. You know, being first time parents, you think, are we gonna be able to take care of this child? What color is the nursery gonna be? It, what ended up happening was the furthest thing from our minds. It was Super Bowl Sunday, 2002. Uh, we were watching the football game. Everything was going along great. And about at halftime, uh, Joanna had called out to me that she thought something was wrong. And we immediately went to the hospital. About 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning, we get a call and Joanna has been taken to the hospital. She's gone into labor. Um, you know, Really, not a whole lot of indication that this was going to happen. It wasn't something they said, you know, hey, be aware of the fact that, you know, this, this baby may be a preemie. She may not hang around for the full nine months. We didn't really have any of that. And then when we got to the hospital um, that she was planning on delivering at, um, the, the doctors started to do their examination, and this look of fear almost came over the doctor's face, which obviously startled us beyond all words. Um, and I'll never forget, his quote to us was, we can't handle this here. At that point, they immediately put her in an ambulance, rushed her to the high-risk pregnancy hospital um, outside of St. Louis, and that's where we were for the next 10 days. It was very scary. You know, I, I didn't know what to expect. It was our first child, um, you know, being transported in an ambulance, them telling me they weren't sure if I was gonna make it to the next hospital without delivering her. So it, it was just very emotional. That night, there was a team of physicians making rounds from the from Cardinal Glennon Children's Hospital in St. Louis um, at the same time. When we finally got to the point where this is it, the baby is coming. We, we can't hold her off anymore. She is coming now. Fortunately, Taylor was born uh, at one hospital, but then she was transferred immediately to Cardinal Glennon Hospital, which has a absolutely great NICU unit. The way they had prepared us was that if Taylor comes out and she's making an attempt to breathe, if we can see her trying to gasp, making any effort to try to live, we'll then go forward with the steps needed to to assist her. When she was delivered and they took her away, I made sure Joanna was all right. I immediately went in and I'm pretty sure I pushed about three nurses out of the way to get to, <laughs> to, get to Taylor just because you know, I wanted to see her and, and to see her was, was amazing. To see how small she was and to see that she was fighting for life um, was really something else. So they brought her in after she was stable and I got to look at her and um, I got to put my hand in her in her little bed and her hand just fit on the top of my pinky. The doctors gave her a 40% chance of survival. The first day or two really was kind of a blur because of the fact that so much was going on so quickly and so little was known about the situation. Probably after about three or four days, now you're starting to get an idea, okay, we're, you know, we're semi-stabilized, as, as stable as a preemie can be. And uh, now we're now looking at, okay, what's the future hold for her? What are, you know, what are her chances? If we make it past three days, well, then her chances increase to 50%. And after the first week, if she's still there, probably 60%. So that was another thing we just kept looking at. And then after about two and a half to three weeks, the doctors were finally able to say, you know, granted, something could always go wrong, but at this point we feel pretty comfortable that she's gonna have a real chance at, at survival. You know, I had waited four and a half months for this baby to come home, and I can remember sitting at home calling my mom, like, I'm not ready for her to come home, you know? <laughs> it was a lot of medications. We had gone to the hospital the night before, and they, they let you stay in a room with the baby, and you get a trial run. They make sure that you can, you know, administer the medication correctly, that you can help her with her oxygen, understand what her monitor meant. So it, it was, it was mixed feelings, you know, excitement that she was coming home, and then the overall just, scared out of your mind, like, oh my gosh, we're at this point, you know, I hope I can do this. Yeah, yeah and um, the day she came home, ironically, was Father's Day um, of, of that year, of 2002. So I've, I've told a lot of people, and I will always say that my very first Father's Day was hands down the best Father's Day I'm ever gonna have. 
It's been an ongoing battle up until about the point where she was five or six. Um, since then, her body's healed beautifully. Um, we still fight small little battles um, with her with her health, with her lungs. She still has a tendency to get pneumonia. However, for the most part, at this point, she's a very happy, very healthy 11-year-old girl. Two of the therapies that Taylor received, nitric oxide and surfactant, to help her with her underdeveloped lungs um, and to help her be able to breathe and live, the research for them were directly funded by the March of Dimes. So, you know, everyone who knows that the March of Dimes goes out and they go do fundraising, but they're not really sure where it goes, it, it truly does go to help save babies' lives because without the March of Dimes and without the research that they've funded, I'm not sure Taylor's story would have turned out as good as it did. The March of Dimes has just been an amazing organization for our family. You know, for us to be able to step into the role as the ambassador family, even for Taylor to be out there, and um, you know, it's just been a huge confidence booster for her. She's enjoyed going to all the events. You know, it's been very important for our family to be able to show others what the March of Dimes has done to help babies like Taylor. The March of Dimes basically just gives more kids a better chance. And you know, you just can't ask for more than that.